Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with Asset Guidance Group. I wanted to get into the market sell-off from February the 16th from the highs, uh, 2021, to March the 4th, 2021. Let's look at how our models have fared and some observations I've made about the markets. Uh, as always, required to give you these disclosures. If you uh, don't have already, uh, and, and want my firms uh, and my personal uh, forms, uh, ADB2, et cetera, et cetera, go to assetguidancegroup.com. You can download them from there. If you want to get on a trading list and, uh, and talk to me about subscriptions and models and uh, 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 ongoing uh, advice subscriptions for your company plans and everything, text all caps AGGADV to 415-528-7403. We'll get you hooked up. All right, let's let's get into it. Uh, the S and P for the period in question, again, that's February sixteenth through March 4, twenty twenty one, uh, is the was down four four point one seven percent. The S and P five hundred was minus four point one seven percent for the time period in question. Very pleased to report our top six models now out of 40, uh, 42. Yeah, so out of forty two models, we, I'm going to give you the top six bottom six, and of course there were 30 in between, that uh, were fairly uh, robust against uh, this downturn, this storm. So uh, a fairly a fairly pre, uh, pleased with that. So the dividend yield ranks, and I'll show you a slide here in a, in a, in a couple of minutes here to, to explain. We saw this uh, uh, evidence uh, in the market shifts. And so the dividend paying models were the best performers throughout this uh, this period. So dividend high yield ranks was the, was paid in excess of five percent. Uh, the next following one is dividend growth, dividend top payers logistics. I call them trucks uh, for for uh, memory's sake. And then uh, the two weeks value trade and the return on equity. Uh, for uh, shooting, shooting to double uh, in, in that, uh, you know, likelihood of doubling uh, performance in that category. So those held out. So dividend high yield ranks then was uh, returned an actual 5.12%. Dividend growth and in income 4.52%. Dividend top payers 4.41%. These are actual performance numbers, okay? Trucks was 332 uh, Two-week value was 1.93 and uh, ROE 100, 1.39%. Those are the top six raw data. Now, now relative to the S&P 500, let's take a look at that just for a sec because remember the S&P 500 was down 4.17%. Uh, so relative to that, the dividend high yields is actually, you know, out performed the S&P 500, 9.29%, dividend growth, 8.69%, dividend top payers, 858 trucks, 749 two-week values, 6.1%, and, uh, and, and return on equity, 556 So I would put to you that uh, we handled, those were pretty, pretty robust, those are very nice. Uh, it, it depends on the weighting in terms of how much cash you have in those, but if you had a lot, you did very well. And so you weathered the storm very nicely. All right. So not to be, uh, you know, I mean, let's look at the, let's look at the laggards and, and the, um, and, and the bottom performers here. And so the bottom six were the um, internet of things. So you're going to see this in a couple of minutes. I'll, I, again, I'll show you uh, in the markets generally, this movement uh, out of tech, out of the ones that brung us, okay, through the pandemic. So everything that we were in love with, now the markets are hating on. So the Internet of Things was down 1408. Uh, raw numbers, uh, uh, a non-folio trade, which was the investment in MRA, M mRNA, Moderna, uh, was off 14.08% uh, or 1.8%. Or uh, through uh, March the 4th, close of, close of the trade, March the 4th, 2021, minus 14.18% for Moderna. The Internet of Things, minus 15.86. Healthcares, minus 20.24. The Roaring 20s model, uh, minus 21.65%. Uh, and then the, uh, the companies using the new memory RNA technology, I call them mRNA vaxxers, 
minus 22.34. Bottom right, you'll see that relative to the SP 500, Internet of Things was off 9.91%. Uh, the mRNA, the Moderna trade was off 10.01%. Internet of Things, 1169. Healthcare, 1607. Roaring 20, 1748. And uh, the mRNA, Baxter's. A minus 18.17 relative to the S&P 500. So let's look at some market observations here on, 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 on what's going on, the, the dynamic here. Bond yields are continuing to rise. Consumer discretionary is moving to staples, okay, consumer staples. It's almost as if that we are uh, into a end of a business cycle, a recessionary economy, this great trade that has taken us this far, and now we're shifting over into a, a, a new recovery cycle as we get uh, in touch with uh, reality again. And, and we're seeing the shift from growth to value and, and continuing uh, as we go uh, uh, through this transition of reopening the economy and getting back into things. So let's take a look at that. So the NASDAQ composite versus the 10-year yield, the U.S. Treasury yield, you can see, uh, if you can't tell anything else, all you can see on the right-hand side of this chart is a downward trend to the right and then a precipitous fall towards the very right-hand side. And that's all you need to know in terms of the relationship between the NASDAQ composite and U.S. Treasury yields. So that ratio used to be high. And it is it has dropped precipitously uh, over recent weeks, and the same thing could be said with the S and P 500. The same look of the chart, and it's falling off because these bond yields are coming back up. What's going on? People are selling the bonds. They're getting out and getting into the new uh, economy, or they're selling the bonds. They're selling the stocks also, and sitting on the sidelines. Okay, to wait and see where this is going on would not be uh, unfair to say. I would I would argue the shift from consumer discretionary to consumer staples. Okay, people aren't worried so much about buying the new iPhone right now and all those things like that. So we're getting into consumer staples. Okay, so movement from Apple's, Amazon's into uh, ordinary, more ordinary uh, types of companies uh, that provide consumer staples. And so we're seeing that ratio from discretionary to staples uh, decline rapidly uh, th through this uh, process. The shift from growth to value is evident here. Uh, the dotted line is growth. The solid line you can see is value. And that disparity really as of March the 4th really uh, pronounced itself again as it did back in uh, late February. So uh, there for a minute they worked in tandem, but now we're seeing the divergence go ahead and manifest itself. Um, and then we're also shifting from growth to value, and here's the evidence on that. And now I, here's what I wanted to let you know on this bottom line here. The bottom line there is the shift in the high dividend, okay? That's a high dividend uh, ETF, and we're seeing a lot of fund flows into that. That doesn't mean you have to invest in ETFs to benefit from that. It means you go into high dividend stocks, which is what uh, you know we've been doing. And so you've seen this trend really since November, since Halloween. Uh, we've seen this trend, okay, moving into the dividends, uh, people aren't necessarily paying, companies aren't necessarily paying dividends yet, people aren't necessarily uh, receiving them or, or, or companies aren't declaring them, but it is a matter of time and so posturing is occurring. So we're looking uh, back at the fixed income trade essentially as you see bond yields rising and, 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 we, and, and stocks uh, falling. So we're getting into a realignment. A lot of moving parts here, a lot of stuff going on. I appreciate your time and your interest. Reach out to me if you want to discuss this more. There's my contact points. Hit me also info at assetguidancegroup.com. W. Nichols is my direct email, assetguidancegroup.com. And then you can always reach me on a cell, 678-480-9426. All right, stay happy and healthy out there as we transition out of this pandemic into a post-pandemic new world, a new economy. We're looking forward to it being a roaring 20s. Okay, 
I'll see you next time.